things, uh, actually it's becoming the internet of everything. Hello and welcome. Joining me right now is Mark Melvis. He is CEO of Luciard. What are Luciard's core solutions and you know uh, application areas? Okay, we, we are traditionally uh, specialists in defense, intelligence, and aviation. That's been our uh, key, uh, our key business and our core business for the very first years of the company. And I think this gave us uh, the the habit and this gave us the discipline to work for clients that cannot accept uh, the slightest mistakes in the software. So. Uh, the, the, the discipline we have is a discipline of very high quality and very fast response times in terms of uh, systems, the systems we produce. Now, this gives us today the possibility to go to markets which did not have these requirements for geospatial data 10, 15 years ago, but which today are getting there. And we see fantastic demand from domains such as telecom, insurance, banking, logistics, transportation, uh, port security, airport security, and even uh, movements of people inside home. So we, we're going from the macro level uh, geospatial information to really spatial information uh, about people moving inside a shop, for example, and determining how they move, what they do, what they look at even. So there is a lot of things that we learned from the defense world that we can today apply to new domains. One of the new trends that's emerging is of setting up smart cities. What challenges do you see that the world is facing setting up that smart city? Okay, smart cities is a great project, of course, and uh, everybody knows that we have to go there to better optimize the resources we have. I mean, it's all a question of optimizing the resources and making sure we leave uh, the world, uh, the, the, the world we leave to our children will be better than the world we inherited from our parents. So that's a very generous idea. It's a global idea. We think it's, it's key to the future of humanity. Uh, but it has a lot of challenges. Uh, one of the, the challenges is that politicians uh, who drive the world imagine what's possible, but then they ask you to do it with the means they have, which are not always adequate to provide the kind of, uh, of solutions they envision. I think we'll get there. It will take time, but we will get there, and we will be in a position where we can actually provide the politicians and those who make decisions at the political level with systems that enable them to deploy their policies. Do you see a role for IoT and cloud in big data analytics? IoT and cloud are of course infrastructures, but an, an infrastructure is only interesting and only valid if it does something for you. So I link this back to the smart city question you had just before. Uh, IoT is actually the Internet of Things. Uh, actually, it's becoming the Internet of Everything. Uh, Internet of Rev Everything is a concept, uh, but how do you uh, drive, derive good out of it? And that's really what, uh, what you're working on. Take the example of smart cities. Internet of Everything might, for example, be applied to lighting, mm -hmm. uh, public lighting. Uh, what if the light senses when someone is approaching a car or a pedestrian is approaching and lights up with just the amount of light that's necessary for that person for the time that the person passes? How much ele electricity and energy can you save that way? So Internet of Things is a concept. The implementation of it really will have profound impacts on our society, mm -hmm. on the way we live and how we optimize the use of resources we make. How has big data analytics, you know, impacted geospatial? And could you give us some examples? Oh, big data analytics uh, has impacted our lives in many, many different ways. In the world we come from, uh, which is uh, aviation and defense, uh, big data existed uh, long before it was called big data. You have uh, engines producing data, you have planes producing data, air traffic control producing lots of data. The, 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 the things that have appeared in the last few years with big data analytics is the way is a new way of looking at data and discovering patterns, discovering insights and transforming basically uh, data into information that you can action to do something. Uh, when it's, uh, for example, uh, to you think about aviation, uh, you can use big data analytics to reduce the time spent by aircraft uh, circling around an airport waiting for a slot to open. Why? Well, because by analyzing weather and traffic patterns, you can predict what's going to happen and you can delay a plane before it starts in, in its engines instead of, like was the case in the past, 
just discovering that the flight is about to enter the London Heathrow area and will have to circle 30 minutes. And today we're capable much better than before, thanks to big data analytics, to derive the fact that the plane will have a delay before it even starts its engines, which saves tons of fuel mm -hmm. and uh, is much more comfortable for the passengers. And what are the major concerns that you see in geo-intelligence community these days? The, the major concerns we have uh, in geospatial uh, in intelligence systems from the geospatial context is the fact that the maps we have or the maps that exist are not good enough. Uh, when you look at things from the macro level, uh, the geospatial at the big scale, uh, the world is divided in countries and countries have borders. Well, these borders, as we, as we see in the, the Middle East, tragically mm -hmm. these days, is that these borders do not represent a physical reality on the ground. So the, the challenge today is to create, for the geospatial community at least, the challenge is to create maps that rep represent an actionable reality, maps with which you can do something. I mean, yes, you need to protect the border because uh, international law is uh, built that way, and that's desi it's designed around uh, national borders. But not all the political players or not all the actors of today's uh, world uh, respect boundaries. So you need to create maps which are actionable for or against these bodies that do not respect uh, international boundaries. What kind of challenges that you see uh, is a defense community and defense market facing as far as you know products and all these? Because mm -hmm. we lack maps. So somewhere it hinders the work that you want to do. So what kind of challenges that you see that this com these, uh, you know, uh, these fields are facing? I think the, the biggest uh, field is that uh, there is too much data. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem is too, too much data and uh, not enough people to analyze the data. The geospatial intelligence community phase uh, is transforming data into information and doing it with less human manpower than would have been needed a few years ago. So what we're seeing is uh, the emergence of uh, deep machine learning, some beginnings of artificial intelligence in uh, geospatial systems which help uh, massage and process information that's available at a scale that didn't exist before. Take social media for example. Social media is often the only source of information you have in countries where information, uh, public information is tightly controlled by governments. So how do you make sense of all that social media information and use it to produce maps that can be used by those who make decisions relative to geospatial information. Mm -hmm. How does this geospatial community ensure that all the data that we are getting, we utilize it somewhere, we make it useful for the consumer, for the people, common people over there, because at the end of the day we are serving the society. So how do you make it very useful for the common man? It will only be useful if it's understandable. And uh, it will only be understandable and meaningful if it contains the right information. There is a lot of noise in the data which you need to get rid of. Uh, noise is not interesting, you want the information. So that's exactly the challenge, is how do we get rid of the noise, how do we focus on the information that is relevant, and how do we make sure that the eye of the person looking at the screen or looking at the map catches the piece of information that we want him to catch. Uh, we at Luciat we develop technologies, like I mentioned, in visual analytics that make it easier to find these unknown unknowns in the map or in the big data. Uh, but there are many, many, many technologies that come into play. And uh, it is a continuous journey. It will never end uh, of finding new ideas on how to master and massage the information in such a way that people can make the right decisions at the right time. Uh, with the information that's as recent as possible. Thanks a lot for speaking to Geospecial Girl. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.